Hey there. If you're thinking about getting out there on the road with the big rigs and driving a rig, an RV, or even a bus, then have we got great news for you. Southwest Truck Driver Training can get you trained and rolling in as little as four weeks. They offer lifetime job placement support. They have special military programs, a financial aid program, including grant applications, and so much more to offer you. Plus, they are family owned business right here in the southwest they have world-class training for class a and b cdls hazmat endorsement training rv training and of course a refresher course if you need one and did we mention they have three locations which are phoenix tucson and north las vegas so we don't know why you're sitting there channel surfing on a tv when you could be learning to drive and roll down the road to earning a great living today go to their website SWTDT.com to learn more about Southwest Truck Driver Training to shift your career into high gear. Tell them you heard about them on the 18 Wheel Talk podcast show. We love them. You will too. Break one nine. Break one nine for radio check. 18 Wheel Talk. Welcome to the 18 Wheel Talk podcast show. We're a podcast for truckers, about truckers, by truckers. Coaching generations of drivers while guiding them on their path to success. Fueling them with knowledge and passion for trucking. Navigating, Navigating the, the industry, industry one, one mile, mile at a time. Spark the revolution. revolution. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. I'm telling you, that's one hot picture you got. <laughs> I think that <laughs> my, I, is my video off or my audio no, you're off, on. right? You're on. You're good. I'm, okay, as long as my audio is off on the computer, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can hear me? I, yeah, I can hear you. <gasps> oh, good. This is hard to start. It's like take 200. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 18 Wheel Talk Podcast Show. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Patrick. Over there is Miss Janet. Say hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. And today we're going to talk well, about. Well, well, before we get on to that. Oh, before we get into what we're going to talk about. I just rewound us. Welcome to our show. Welcome. We're going to take you on a roller coaster ride of the 18 Wheel Talk kind. <sighs> That's got a rhyme to it, a I rhythm know. to it. And uh, if you're listening to us in your ears, please, 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 please like us. Leave us a review on your podcast player of choice. Um, it does wonders for us. If you're watching uh, the YouTube, please smash that like button. Give right us the old about. thumbs up. Subscribe to the show. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss nothing. Yeah. You know, or the nice manicure is not the bad yeah. one. Yeah, there. right. Yeah, it's like right. No, it'll be over here. It'll be here. Here somewhere. Here, right? Yeah. Okay. Here. Somewhere there. Not over here. Over no, there. it's somewhere along. It's somewhere along this bottom row here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. Anyways. Smash the like button. Rate give us a review. Five stars. Like us, hate us. Just just give us five stars. Five stars. <laughs> Don't hate us. <laughs> It does help us out, by the way. And 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 if you want to support the show by sporting some swag, you can go to one eight wheeltalk.com, click on the support the show tab, and there's a bunch of stuff there. These t-shirts are there. If you just want the t-shirt, 18 wheeltalkcom slash t-shirt. That is all. That is all. Hey, welcome to the show. Today we're NFL draft was just April 29th and we're going to, we're going to walk over the first round picks. Just a little bit of it. Have you a know. little fun with it because we're going to, we're going to, well, we're going to put our twist on it because that's what we're going to do. We're going to put our twist on it because I live with two sports fanatics. I've decided to give the NFL another chance. Yeah, yeah I know. Too. She, she had rotten potatoes because of the NFL this past year. This year, for the last, last couple of years, it's oh, gone last. down. <laughs> so, I'm giving him another chance because, you know, go Bears while he's choking down an orange drink. Love the Bears. Even the 85 Bears, love them to death, etc. And I love the current Bears, too. Hey, they had a good pick. Traded hey, up for it. They traded from 20 to 11. So, we'll, we'll talk cover about it. that. Yeah, we'll cover it. We'll, we'll but cover I just it. wanted to talk while he was drinking because I could talk about the bears. The 85 and bears all the time. That's all I hear about is a goddamn 85 bears. At least I had them. Ha ha ha. Listen, I had them too. Yeah, I know. You had the 85 bears. I am so happy for you. you know, I mean, I'm sorry. 
if I saw somebody the size of the refrigerator Perry coming after me, I'd get the hell out of his way. Let him just walk into the end zone. No, I just let him like, OK, here you go, dude. No, let's say like Mike Tyson. All right, dude, I'll just stay there. Hit me once. You're going to pay me a million dollars. OK. <laughs> He's a really nice guy, by the way. I know. Remember, we're from New York. Well, I'm originally from New York. You're from the Midwest. Don't be hating on Illinois. I'm not hating on Illinois, and I didn't say you were from Illinois. I said you're you're from the Midwest. You're from the Midwest. See, I can do that, too. You're from New York. York. (laughs) Anyways, we're going to talk about the NFL's first-round picks from draft day. All right. Ding, 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 ding. (laughs) We are on the air. We're on the clock. Your time starts. Right now. Now. My eye itches. (gasps) Okay. So who with the was, number one, the first pick of the draft. Allegedly, the best pick of everything was Trevor Lawrence, right? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence went to went, the Jag- went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. OK, came from Clemson. I like Clemson. Yep. Clemson Tigers, right? Yep. I know so a tiger went to a, G- a Jaguar. <laughs> kept in the cat family. Yeah. Yeah. But so tell me, rather than just go down the list, which they can find on 18 Wheel Talk. Yeah, they can go to 18 wheeltalkcom slash NFL. I put the first three rounds and I also uploaded the uh, we were we we're on Facebook live of all places. We were trying to do it as a multicast on we we're, we we're going to do YouTube live. And then we found out we don't have enough subscribers to actually be on YouTube live. However, there's a back door that we could use to stream, but, but we found it too late. Well, I knew well, how, we, but my computer found it yeah, too yeah. late. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. Both laptops decided they wanted to go into update mode when we need them the most. Yeah, three hours later. Anyways, so we didn't. We were going to do a Zoom, and then we figured that we that would only uh, you know our Zoom room would only be open for forty minutes because. If we had, you know, if it's more than just us two, then, then, you know, it's limited. It's limited to 40 minutes. If it's just us two talking, we could do this for however long. And I like, again, I tried to set my computer up at the TV, but we couldn't get, we couldn't get sound (laughs) at all. We did a lot too. We We tried, tried. like I said, the computers decided they wanted to go recharge on the day of the the draft. It was like, it was fun. So, so Let's, with all the headaches, we ended up doing Facebook Live, and even that got interrupted. <laughs> so it's in two parts. But the but that's okay. If you go it's to that, if you go there, you can actually watch the two parts. Uh, I see be- how much fun we had. I believe um, I uploaded it to YouTube, so there is you there is a complete version pieced together on YouTube. I think YouTube. they even see Pug interrupt us in that video. No, the the pugs were on the show. They didn't interrupt. They were just part of the show. Oh, okay. They were part of the lawn ornaments. <laughs> they were the lawn ornaments. Okay. So anyway. They were the obstacles. Yeah, they were obstacles. So out of the list of 32 picks, okay, okay, from the first round, which team do you feel out of all the 32 teams that were there? I mean, they're not. There was there was four teams, I think, that had two picks. But okay. out of the 32 picks, which team do you feel had the best pick of the house? Oh, I got to find him. I told you earlier, too. You said Justin, just, you said Justin a, Fields. Well, no, because. Uh, because you're, 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 bi- you're biased. But, no, you're, it wasn't him. It was. Um, <sighs> he went, didn't he go to the guy that went to New England, wasn't it? Mac Jones, the Com Cool Mac Collective Jones. guys. Yeah, it was Mac Jones. Mac uh, Jones, Com 15. Cool Collective. N- number fifth, it was a fifteenth round pick, fifteenth pick in the first round. Quarterback Mac Jones from Alabama went to New England. That was actually my favorite pick for the whole thing because all these other guys that come out and they're in flash and wearing rings and jewelry and looking like they're freaking Hollywood, like self entitlement. Why don't you tell us how you really feel about this? You could read my blog, but anyway, um, but Mac Jones, he, he was just like, so he was, he was like Mr. Smooth, Mr. Smooth, so down to earth. And what that tells me is that when he's playing, 
what are you going to expect for him when he's got all that stress and on right. him? he's going to be Mr. Smooth. He's going to be calm, cool and collected. Exactly. Totally. He, he's not going to feel pressured. He's going to be Mr. Ease. And yeah, I think they got a really good pick with him. Now, I feel my I, I feel the, the team that got the best pick of the house mm-hmm. was the Atlanta Falcons that pick number four, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I feel that he um, is my favorite out of out of all. He, he's a tight end and he's a big boy. And I, I think that the Falcons got a got a winning winning pick right there. That's in my opinion. Yes, I'm a Jets fan. Yes, I'm a, you know, I do like the Bears and I like other teams, but I think Pitts was probably one of the best non quarterback players on the list. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I also liked, um, I'll pronounce his name wrong, Penay Sewell out of Oregon. Penay. Penay Sewell out of Oregon. Yes. He uh, was, he was picked as, as one of the best outside top tackle? five picks. Yes. Yeah. Yep, he was he was the named um, number one in one of the top five picks. Yeah, I forget where where I saw that. ESPN dot com somewhere somebody yeah. somebody posted that the the top five best picks out of the draft, and he was he was the yeah. The you had a one. five list. I had a three list. Yeah, he was the number one on your list. Kyle Pitts was the number one on my list yes. that I looked up. Yep, so but this is true. So who was number two on your list that you looked up? Oh, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. Mm. Uh, let's see. The Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Picked a quarterback. They picked Justin. They jumped up. They they went from 20th to 11 to get they Justin Fields. They traded the daylights to get him. And I forget what they traded. They gave up their first round pick for this. this they, they swapped first round picks. And they gave up and some stuff they for gave up, next uh, year and the year after. First round. And a fourth round. Next year. Yeah. And then uh, something on, uh, I think, a sixth round out of all good, But it was all good picks because what they did was they didn't just get him. They picked up some people to protect him, I think, in round two or round three. Yeah, round twos and threes, I think. They, they picked up they people picked up to some... protect him. So they're not just getting a quarterback and saying, there you go, screw you, do what you can. Right, ex- exactly. They picked up some talent, and they said, okay, this time we're going to pick up talent, and we're going to protect that talent. Right. It's like, Which Chicago's not – I love Chicago, but, oh, my God, they're so not known for doing. They're great on picking defense, but for picking offense to protect their quarterback, that is not their fortune. It's like, it's like the Jets. The Jets have been dropping the ball year after year after year, and they got rid of Darnold, which I thought was a stupid move. They picked up the sack Wilson, but they were smart. They traded up. Yeah. They traded up to number 14 from 23. Yeah. And picked up this Elijah oh. Vera Tucker from USC. Offensive guard. Yeah. From USC. That's a six foot four, 325 pound brick wall right there. I yep. mean, <laughs> they, they're, 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 they're like, we're, we're not going to do like we did last time. We're going to protect the quarterback. Hey, I got a question for you. Hey, I might have an answer for you. Didn't uh, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong? I'm sure. Osa Odegzua go to UFC um, University of Southern Cal. I think so. Okay, because I want to give a nod out to him. His older brother Oa also played um, for a couple seasons, and there's four brothers, single mom. They were raised, I want to say, up in like Seattle or something. Okay, but. Mental illness runs in their family. Their father suffered and Oa also suffered from mental illness. And Osa would like to see the NFL locker rooms be a place where players in crisis can come and get help and get support. And I just, and then he's talking about like depression, like right. Oa really suffered for years for dep- with depression. People who, you know, obviously kill themselves when they're depressed. Um, and I just want to give a nod to, Osa Odegzua, because I think that's really incredible. Yes, so yeah, five times. Man. Yeah, I know. I don't. Who, who drafted Osa? I don't know. Believe it or not, I forgot to look that up. Oh. I'm fired. You, you could so Google fired. it for me right now on your phone. You were so. I'm late. fired, but Janet's fired. <clears throat> but anyway, that's I just it. no more alcohol for you. But I like it. I think it was the Jacksonville Jaguars, wasn't it? No, uh, that was. No, I don't remember, no, no. but Dallas Cowboys. Oh yeah, third round. I just think that that's really cool of him. 
Yeah, they picked him third round pick number 75, Dallas Cowboys picked Osa. Odigzua. Yeah, say that five times fast. That, 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 that. Ha, 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 ha. Everybody was You're a that. funny girl. But yeah, like I said, I just wanted to give a nod out to him because I was reading about that because I follow stuff on like depression and mental illness and everything else. I, I read a little bit of this and that and I'm like, hey, wait, he, he was in the NFL draft. Just and, this and that? And everything else. And everything else in between. <coughs> and um, so <clears throat> that's what I wanted to give a nod to. Okay. Nodding. Nodding. Hats off. I take my hat off, but I got headphones on. Proverbial hats off. Oh. There you go. Okay, so we left off with what? Najee Harris out of Alabama? Well, no, we just were we were just rambling, ramble, bambling. Now, on my number two list, I, I had, we had Justin Fields that got drafted by the Bears. Your number two was? Micah Parsons out of Penn State who went to the Cowboys. He went to the Dallas Cowgirls. Maybe that's why I thought of Osa. Yeah. Probably. Uh, he's a inside linebacker. My brother Chuck ought to be happy. He likes the Cowboys. He's a he's he's not a cowboy fan. He's a cheerleader fan. Well, I have no he was doubt. Born, he's he's born around the same time my brother was. He wasn't a Cowboys fan. He was a cheerleader fan. We all saw those cheerleaders. <laughs> Hell, even I was a cheerleader fan. Come on, Patrick. Yeah, even I was a cheerleader all fan. Right. Come on, now you think about it. All right. Woohoo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My nose it just <gasps> someone must be telling stories about me. Isn't that what that says? Yeah, maybe. That little too? Yeah, you're gonna kiss a stupid person. <laughs> Notice I didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move on that one. Nope, I'm not biting. Okay. All right. So the number the top out of the top five picks out of the out of the 2021 NFL draft I read was Nige Harris, who was picked by Pittsburgh in the as pick number 24. We know someone that likes Pittsburgh a little. Yeah, Nige's a running back, which is good because Pittsburgh's running back is now playing for the Arizona Cardinals. Connor. I know. So so they needed somebody, which I, I think Nige Nige was a good pick for them. Yeah. <laughs> And so, I think uh, if I if I am run, looking at this list quick, Nige was the first running back picked in the draft. Because. Yeah, but that, then number 20, the 25th pick, which is your number, which is three, my number three pick. Uh, Travis Etienne. At, 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 at the knee, I think it was. I thought it was Etienne. But anyway, out, Travis out of Clemson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whose name I can't pronounce. Sorry, dude. Um, he went to the Jaguars. Hey, you know He's also a running back. Tra- Travis, I apologize for Janice's mistake, but could you please, could you please, if it's, if, if you would, please, please email us your pronunciation of your name. Okay. So, so first of all, if it's French, it's probably Etienne. It's in, it's Etienne. It's E T I E N N E. All right. Hold on. I'm going to Google it. Hold on. You Google it. I'm going to Google you. All right. Let's see. The 25th pick of the draft. Mm. Who had the 25th pick of the draft? They're going to give you the team, not the player. So I turned the volume down, too. Do, 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 I turned the volume down. Do, 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 do. Don't rush me. Do, do, damn it. Do, do, do. When did you turn Russian? Do, 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 do. Pa, 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 pa. The 25th pick of the NFL draft. <laughs> really? All right. Come on. So Come on, Google. Talk to me. His Google's not working. But who, who was picked 25th in the NFL draft? Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you don't have a dash cam in your semi and you went and spent all that money on it, Do you really think that you and your truck are protected against John Q. Public? We don't. That is why we recommend Rexing USA cameras and equipment. Whatever it is you are looking for, whether it be a dash cam, a body cam, a trail cam, or similar, they probably have it. Nearly every new vehicle coming out has a dash cam, and there is a reason for it. Litigation. Yes, welcome to America, the land of litigation. 
So the best thing you can do is to protect what you own with video and pictures. And their dash cams, boy, let me tell you, their cams do a lot. They have 170-degree ultra-wide angle lenses that will automatically lock in the last video if it feels a vibration from an accident. It has a super capacitor battery backup that is better than lithium for extreme heat or cold. Add in loop recording, a mobile app, and parking monitoring and more. And yes, now you have a really great package for this company of cameras. So come on, check it out at 18wheeltalk.com slash dashcam. That's 18wheeltalk.com slash dashcam. Amari Rogers. According to CBS. <laughs> favorite dick. Amari Rogers was one of Trevor. Wrong year, bitch. <laughs> All right, well, so let's get past who that. Who was picked 25th overall in the 2021 NFL draft? That's too funny. Travis Eddian. Eddian. I say it's being pronounced wrong. Travis Eddian. Unless it's English. That might be an English pronunciation. Travis Eddian. Okay, let's keep going. You know what? I should look back on the video because <laughs> I had to. <laughs> okay. If Roger Goodell can say it, then it, it's got to be true, right? That's true. So number four for you that your list showed was the number, the number fourth pick. Was... Came, he came number up number eight. J.C. Horn out of South Carolina went to the Jaguars. Yes, Carolina. No, Carolina Panthers. Oh, Panthers. Sorry, my bad. The, all I'm looking at is like a little microscopic dot. Sorry, yeah. Panthers. That's the cornerback. Panthers. Yes, out of Carolina, right? Yeah, Carolina. Yeah. When the Panthers first started up, I really liked them. You know, when the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers first got in the league, I looked at my brother and I said, "I said, you watch those two teams are going to make the playoffs." And he's like, "Why? Why do you, why do you say that?" I said, "Because." Because they never need an inaugural team. So it's like NFL went in and said, you, 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 you're on this team. You, 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 you're on that team. So mm -hmm. it was like the best of the best already on the yeah. team. <laughs> it's like the deck was stacked. Yeah. So, and, and, and they did make the playoffs. And I think the, uh, the Panthers uh, missed the Super Bowl by one game. I believe Jacksonville, I think, got knocked out in the second round of the playoffs. Don't know. But I don't remember it because it was, it was a while ago. Okay, so who was your number five? Uh, the number five was pick number 22 by the Tennessee Titans. Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia okay. Tech. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. VT. VT. So, yeah, Caleb Farley. Other than that, I mean, what else? What else you want to talk about on this draft? Well, because you were kind of like, you got to see the faces, though. I mean, okay, I mean, so out of the list of thirty-two teams, uh, you know, out of the thirty-two picks, I should say, from the NFL draft this year, mm -hmm. your your number one pick was Mac Jones that New England got. My number one pick was Kyle Pitts mm -hmm. that Atlanta got. So who was your number <clears throat> two all-time favorite pick? And you said I can't pick the Bears. No, you could pick whoever. If you think the Bears got the best pick in your in your mind, and I know in my mind they they leaped. They did. Granted, they gave up the house to go go do it, but I think they did an incredible job. I think that was a really good play by the decision makers at the Bears. I agree. I agree with you. So if that's your number two pick, that's also my number two pick. Yeah. And then I think probably, I don't know. I really like um, Jamar Chase out of LSU, wide receiver that came up number five. Yep. The Bengals, mm -hmm. Cincinnati Bengals picked him. So which which one do you like better to, for your number two pick? Justin Fields or Jamar Chase? The Bears. The Bears. The right. Bears. So that's a J2 right there and a P2. And Jamar Chase would be my number three. That'd be your number three. That's a J3 yeah. there. I don't know who my number, my, my, my number three pick. Probably Panal. Panay. 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 Yeah. I mean, that's 
six foot, I think he's six foot four, 325 pounds. That is a big boy. Let me hold on. I got a list here. Panay Sewell. He's six foot four, 330 pounds. Holy guacamole. <laughs> he's almost six foot five. He's six, four and three quarter or seven eighths. Uh, it's an eighth of an inch shy of being six foot five. I, it's like, wow. I mean, and then my, my, well, who's your number four? Let's pick, let, let, let's make, let's, let's give everybody our top five picks. Who would your number four all time pick then? <laughs> A really good question. I think I think mine mine would be the Dolphins, uh, Jalen Waddle. Their their number six pick. Okay. I think that would be my number four. I'm trying not to sneeze because I think that was a really good pick for the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. um, they actually traded back. They actually had the number three spot. They traded back to number six, I believe. With the San Francisco 49ers. True. So. Hmm. I know. Decisions. decisions. Well, I do, I do like Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. You know, I grant you he's in the top three, but I do like him. But I'm also really. I do like my defense, too, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why it's kind of like. Oh. I know. Who, who's Janet going to pick as her fourth favorite pick? Everybody wants to know. Uh, I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. I like number 18, Jelaine Phillips out of Miami. Or that went to Miami. That went to Miami. Out of Miami. That out of went Miami, to, went to Miami. My, went to Miami. Woo. That was defensive end. Yeah, I liked the, him. The number, number 18 trying. pick. That was Miami's second pick of the draft. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought he was on our other list, but I don't see him for his size and all that other stuff jalen phillips nope he's not on there because uh, i what i did was i downloaded the top 20 of the ranks you know the college rank them oh the college rank yeah he wasn't right. in the top 20 on the he, college ranks but he went number 18 you know this is true oh you know who else i really liked i remember watching uh quitty pay where did he go he went to, didn't he go to the Indianapolis Colts? I don't remember. I don't even see him in the top list that we have. Could he pay? <laughs> yep. But he was, he was picked uh, 21. I really liked him. Where? 21's not on the list. Where did they 20, got... where did you, your list jumps from 19 to 22. I just, I just realized that. I'm like, where's 20 and 21? How are, can I not? Um, <laughs> um Patrick? You're not in charge of lists anymore. My, my list is flawed. His list does not have number 20 or 20. I'm like, how maybe did... maybe it was a tie. They had to get rid of it. <laughs> anyway, Quiddy Pay. I liked it. I Let really... me see your list. Uh... I'll write it in for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I remembered. I'm like, wait, I really liked Quiddy Pay. I remember talking about him. Defensive end. 6'2", 261 out of Michigan. Yep. Yep. Went to Indy. Indianapolis. Colts. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, he did wow, go. That is, that's weird. I never even noticed that when I printed it. Uh, usually, I'll, I'll put the list together so that they they, they match. Well, my the, OCD is like that. And the other guy that's missing off your list is uh, Christian Derisaw out of Virginia Tech, outside he's a, tackle. He's on. He's on. He's number twenty three pick. I thought he was number so, twenty. Oh, he's number twenty ranked. Sorry, yeah, my he bad. was ranked twenty, but he was picked by the Vikings. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, he's my number five pick. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So who's your who's your number five pick? I don't... Quiddy Pay. He was my number four. I thought. No, your number four was um, uh, Jalen Phillips from Miami to Miami. Oh, Jalen Phillips. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't. Okay, have, so he, did, he doesn't. Have, he doesn't have far to drive. That's a good this, thing for him. Yeah, and the commute for changing apartments and everything's really good for him. His yeah. family ought to like that too. So yeah, Quiddy Pay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So you say you like tools. Now, are we talking about normal people like them or Tim the Toolman Taylor like them? Because if you're like the two of us, it is definitely in the Tim the Toolman Taylor's range. I have never been bored when shopping for tools. So here's what you do. Head on over to 18wheeltalk.com slash JB tools. 
It will take you to their site, which will normally give you a discount, a chance in a giveaway, join the rewards club, or something really great like that. Then start browsing to your heart's delight. Whether you're looking for power tools, hand tools, 25-ton jack stands, or gardening tools, they have got you covered. So take a few minutes to follow the link, 18wheeltalk.com slash jbtools, and jewel over a few tools while you're there. Uh, number 21, that would be Indy. Mm -hmm. That would be, so I I have something else, but it can wait a second. So yeah, Quiddy Pay, I, I did like him. I, there was just some people that they're, not just their stats and their size and their everything, how they presented themselves, how they handled themselves, you know, was different than others. I don't know how else to describe it. You know, to me, when they're up there and they're getting drafted, how they act then mm -hmm. um, tells you something about how they're going to act on the field because it's still stress. There's stress when they're up there getting drafted. Oh, what number are you going to go? And they're sitting there with family or coaches or, you know, whoever's helping them get drafted representatives and everything. Um, how they're acting right then when they're waiting to hear their name. Did it go in the round? They thought or in the spot right. they thought. Who was the one that went up there that, that I called Hollywood? I don't remember. I just remember him all polished either, and perfect. And I, I, I want to say it was Waddle, but it could have been maybe it was Sertan. I don't. Remember. I don't know, but he was decked out like he was ready to walk the the Oscars, the red Hollywood, carpet. Yeah, the red the red carpet, Hollywood Hall of Fame and stuff. So I don't have his name in front of me, and I should. Who was picked last in the NFL drafts? Oh, Mister Irrelevant. He's not Mister Irrelevant. No, I'm just saying that was that was that's the pick number. They call it Mister Irrelevant because he's the last pick of the draft. Okay, you find his name, and I'm going to tell you why he's not Mister Irrelevant. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Who was picked last in the 2021 NFL draft? You notice he got it right this time and gave the year. He's not going to talk to me anymore. He's mad at me. <laughs> his Google's mad at him. So let me tell you why, while he finds out who we're talking about. And I did know his name, but yeah, migraines. What can I say? Oh, that's your final answer. Huh? Yep. So he's not irrelevant because who he got, was Mr. Irrelevant in the 2021 NFL draft. I'm going to smack you, Patrick. You keep calling him that. Grant Stewart. Out of where? Houston. And where did he go? Houston. Okay, so what college did he come out of? He came out of Houston, went to Tampa Bay. Okay, there we go. Now I did. Now that's the whole story. He went to the Bucks. So here's why he he played he he played for the Houston Cougars. So here's why Grant Stewart is not Mister Irrelevant because he got picked in the NFL draft in 2021. He's not on that list of I thought I was going to get picked and didn't. Mm -hmm. He's not on that list of. I always dreamt of going to the NFL, but I suck and I'm not good enough. Wait, I'm, wait what? He's not on that list of, I was a high school star and found out while I was in college that the NFL was a pipe dream and ended up getting a different job. He went for it and he still made the NFL draft. That's now, all that counts because. I don't know what position he played. It okay. Doesn't, so doesn't say, but if he's a quarterback and he was the last pick of the draft, he, he's the next Tom Brady. I, I, That's where I was going with that. Yeah. Look how far down Brady was picked and look where he ended up. Brady was a 199. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but he wasn't the last pick. It was close, okay. but he wasn't. We'll have to pay attention, see what happens to Grant Stewart this year. You know, so there's another list here. What list would that be? So there's this other guy that did this other list and it was what he considered the worst eight picks in the NFL draft. Okay. And I, I again, I kind of grain of salt because a pick is a pick. And if you got pit drafted in the NFL draft, my hat's off to you because you have something that I never had in me. And most of the world doesn't have in them. You have the athletic ability to get drafted in the NFL and politics aside and money aside and everything else. It still takes 
a good amount of talent and athletic ability to be drafted in any sport. I, I totally agree. Okay. And I found out that Stewart, a University of Houston linebacker. There you go. First team All-American athletic conference selection. Participated in Friday's Pro Day at the University of Houston. Well, that was back. I'm just reading. But yeah, he has a fight against sex trafficking foundation. Oh, wow. Called Heels to Halos. Good for him. Uh, Sounds like shoes. Well, yeah. So the, the, well, the article says he's using his platform to help fight against sex trafficking. And it's called Hilo, Heels to Halos, I believe. I'll have to finish reading, but okay, uh, that's another episode for another time. Maybe, maybe we could we do could, an episode on what all these guys have for their foundations and everything. Maybe we could try to get Mr. Stewart on our podcast show. That that's would be something. I, Mr. Irrelevant comes to an irrelevant podcast show. I agree. <laughs> because we're 18 wheel talk. We're irrelevant to what he's going to talk about. It's all good. So... So here's the other list. And it was this guy picked what he felt were the eight worst draft picks of the 2021 NFL. Okay. Again, start, are you going to start with number eight or, or you're going to start with number one and go down the list? Uh, just starting with what he's got is so the, the worst one would be number one. I don't know how That's fine. it's That's, just his okay. picks. All right. So there's eight worst. There's eight worst. Okay. okay. This first pick he picked was Alex Leatherwood Leatherwood. Outside linebacker that went pick 17 to the Raiders to the Raiders. Okay. He says it was a reach because he did play. uh, Uh, He did not play outside linebacker though in college. He played left tackle. He's playing offensive tackle. Okay. He, he played left. Sorry. It says outside linebacker. Oh, well. On this, it says, oh, well, outside linebacker. Okay, but anyway. Offensive lineman. Okay, lineman. He played, I just had it, left tackle at Alabama. Okay. Okay. So they said they're talking about how he needs to go be moved to guard, which he played a little bit at Alabama, but they said it's really confusing. There was a 69% that Leatherwood was going to be available at pick number 43 for the Raiders. They thought he should have gone to the Raiders. He did go to the Raiders at 17, pick 17. That would, but they, they're they saying that it was a bad pick because they 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 must have traded up to him for him. Or they picked him at 17 when they could have picked him at 45. I don't, uh, I don't understand. Maybe. He was the 40th and 45th overall on the consensus of the big boards. Viewed as a round two, but he went in round one. Right. That's why they maybe say. Maybe the Raiders saw something that nobody else did. That's true. You know, I mean, they got Chucky for a coach. I mean, maybe the maybe the coach is like, yeah, I want that guy. Yeah. So I think that's similar with the next guy, uh, Peyton Turner, uh, D defensive end. D E, yeah, defensive end. Round one, pick twenty eight, went to the Saints. Went to the Aints. They say he's talented, but they didn't see him going in round one. He was ranked sixty eighth and sixty on the big boards. Um, they say he also plays defensive end was still available, ranked higher on every big board out there. Gregory Rousseau, Rousseau. Gregory Rousseau is who they thought the Saints would pick instead of Peyton Turner. Okay. Um, they say, well, maybe the Saints saw something in him that nobody else did. I think that's the case with all of these. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, next one is round two, pick 17. And his that's Aaron Banks. Okay. Off- offensive lineman uh, went to the 49ers. They thought he was supposed to go in round three at uh, 93rd uh, overall in the consensus. Okay. But he went, a, They like they said, he went early. He's, he's not the type of lineman often projected for San Francisco 49ers zone stretch. Typically, a heavy outside zone system requires athletic interior blockers who display outstanding lateral movement, and Banks isn't that. That's why they say it's a bad pick. Oh, I got you. Okay. So they do give some reasons on some of them, but like I said, I I don't know that I agree. I just want to see that other people have other point of views. I'm not going to, you know, there's only eight, like I said. Yeah. So next up is round two, pick 30, Josh Myers out of the pack. It's just got a C next to it. Uh, Center. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh yeah, it's got to be center. Do it. Mm. Um. If he it was, was, if, it, if he was a corner back, it would say CB. CB. Yeah. Well, just saying. Okay, so he should have also gone round three. They see him as a more of a developmental prospect, not a clear starter, and they are surprised that the Packers passed up on Creed Humphrey. Yeah. To pick this guy. Okay. I forget where Creed went. It doesn't say. I I know he went in one of the in in the top three. Yeah. He's oh, a, he, top three rounds. Yeah, he, he went in, in one of the three rounds. Okay. I know he wasn't a first all overall. He might have been a second, maybe a third round. Okay. Uh, Trey McKitty. <laughs> okay. Tight end went to the Chargers round three, pick 34. He was the 97th overall player on the board. They say he should have gone 186th. Wow. Yeah. They say he was a sixth or seventh round talent. They were really surprised to see him go third. Um, but he has a chance to well, make maybe somebody paid some money so he could get bumped up. Yeah, <laughs> sure. They said he has a chance to make end of roster or practice squad. That's not exactly what you want when you take a player in the third round. Yeah. But again, you want somebody that's potentially going to like get into it, get into the game like right away. Yeah. And then it does, a, it does a side note. The Chargers pick of wide receiver Josh Palmer could also be seen as a bad value. Okay. Then it goes uh, Cowboys Nashawn Wright, cornerback, round three, pick 36. Uh Uh, Lowest pre-draft grade from the NFL of any player drafted within the first three rounds. He was projected as a seventh round pick or as an undrafted rookie free agent. He was one of the ones who wasn't even supposed to be picked, in other words. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. He was so lowly rated, he did not even appear on Athletics Consensus Big Board, which ranked the top 300 prospects. And they say they're really surprised he went there because they did not even see him as a starter when they watched it, watched his tape. Wow. Somebody saw something. Like I said, somebody saw something in this kid and said, yeah, we need him. Get him. Yep. Uh, Titans picked Des Fitzpatrick at wide receiver, round four, pick four. He okay. had one of the lower pre-draft grades from NFL.com uh, zero in out of the players who were selected. Mm-hmm. They again said seventh round. He was a 16th wide receiver off the board, 32nd overall wide receiver prospect. So they figured, I mean, that's, he moved up, you know, double. He was supposed to go out right. 32nd. He came out 16th. Came out, yeah. Maybe the Titans. Kinda, yeah. And this is the. Wait, wait. He stepped in shit and came out smelling like a rose. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> But this is this next sentence is what I'm reading some notes. So this next yep. sentence says it all. Maybe the Titans knew something the rest of us didn't. I think that's true about all these guys. Yeah. Okay. So the last one they show is John Bates, tight end out of they went to Washington, round four, pick 19. Okay. Lowest pre draft grade from Zerlin out of players selected within the first four rounds. He was the fourth worst pre draft grade of all players selected. Wow. They say he doesn't offer much as a receiving threat. He's primary, primarily viewed as a blocking tight end. Um, 248th overall prospect. But he was sixth overall tight end taken despite being 12th overall tight end on the big board. It certainly seems like Washington could have drafted Bates much later on in the draft and used their draft pick more wisely. Okay. But again, they saw something... I agree. He like would, I said, somebody said, no, no, no we're not going to wait on this guy. We, yeah, we he want was him supposed now. to go 248th and he went 124th. Hey. Somebody saw something that nobody yeah. else saw. Yep. Oh, by the way, did you know that the Cardinals owner piloted his own private jet to go pick up their top pick? Really? Yeah. He piloted the his, plane. Yeah, that's what they plane. say. He piloted his own plane. And the Arizona Cardinals took Zaven Collins. And that's what they said. He, the, the owner went and piloted his own private jet to go pick this guy up. Offensive line. O-L-E. Okay, so. Offensive line N, I think. I don't know. Kyle would know. You could holler. Well, it's not an offensive lineman, but I, I'm not worried about it. It's all good. I could just text him and ask him. So here's my question to you. Okay. Okay. Who do you feel had the worst pick in the first round? 
and why? I don't. Like, for instance, I feel that the Broncos taking Patrick Sertan the second. Okay. You know, and, and yeah, and uh, I remember seeing him and his dad, but taking him in an already saturated cornerback team, the Denver Broncos got more corners than they know what to do with. Do they have any that are close to retiring? I, I don't think so. I, I think they're they, all, I mean, they're all within their salary cap. They're, they, they all got two, two or more years left on their contracts. That's what I mean. It's like, unless they got him as because he's a top prospect. Okay. So maybe he was ranked. He was ranked 10th overall on, on our list. Denver may have picked him up and it's going to use him as a bargaining chip. Maybe. And they may have picked him up with the thought of let's hold on to him because we have so-and-so who's been injury prone or been no, talking retired. I don't think Elway would do that. I don't know. John Elway owns the team. I know. It's, but he may, he may use it as a bargaining chip to, to try to lure Aaron Rodgers over. <laughs> that, that was my next question. Well, I mean, yeah, What's we, we definitely got to touch that. I don't know. Maybe he's crying, you know, poor me, poor me. Okay. So there's some people. Um, well, a supposedly Aaron Rodgers has stated that he it does not. He, he's not playing for Green Bay. He, he doesn't want to play anymore. Not, okay. not in Green Bay anyways. Okay. So who was it? I was telling you that I loved how they put it. I've watched him on the Terry new Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw. Oh, my God. Good old Terry. Terry Bradshaw, Terry freaking Bradshaw. Oh my God. I love you, man. Uh, <laughs> that would be cool to get Terry freaking Bradshaw on our show. That would be really funny. So talk a little bit about Terry Bradshaw while I look up this quote, Terry Bradshaw talking about, <laughs> well, you go right ahead. You're doing great. You know, he's talking about Aaron Rodgers crying, you know, in the soup and he should just buck it up, stay with green Bay. Cause it's a good fit for him. And and just just suck it up, Sally Sue. It's like it's like uh, I think Terry Bradshaw had said. Uh, I found it. Go ahead. All okay. right, you, I'll let you read it. Okay, quotes from Terry Bradshaw on the Mike and Maggie show. Him being upset shows me how weak he is. Who the hell cares who you draft? He's a three-time MVP in the league, and he's worried about this guy they drafted last year at number one. Bradshaw admitted he does not know what is said behind closed doors, but given his own experience and what he considers to be a similar situation, he doesn't get why Rogers is so perturbed. And then he can, they continue the quote. As for him being upset, my God, I do not understand that. Pittsburgh drafted Mark Malone, number one, Cliff Stout in the third or fourth round. I had them coming at me from all angles, and I embraced it because when we went to practice, I wasn't worried about those guys. They didn't scare me a bit, so I don't understand why he's being so upset at Green Bay. Just let him cry. Rogers reportedly <laughs> will not return to the team if Gutenkunz remains GM. So then Bradshaw goes on to say, are you kidding me? Really, Aaron? That's where this is. Here's what I would do. I wouldn't budge. I'd let him gripe. I'd let him cry. Retire. You're 37. Go ahead. Retire. See you later. I'm really strong about stuff like that. It just makes him look weak. How dare you draft somebody? This is Bradshaw talking. Obviously, he does not need the money. Probably he should just go retire and go do Jeopardy or something. He, <laughs> I think that's what's happening. Either think, he gives in or he wants to do. <laughs> either he gives in or Green Bay don't give in. Move on. I think he, I think that's because Bradshaw says I flat out call him on it. He would, I, I think if he was to not play this year coming, mm -hmm. that I think he's going to, he would step into the role as host of the Jeopardy show. How do you figure that? Because he was picked to be one of the special guests by Alex Trebet. I forgot all about that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't The Rock. Well, it, then, wasn't, it was Aaron fucking Rogers. Well, then he could sing. <laughs> I lost on Jeopardy. Yeah, right. Baby. But he was even on Jeopardy as a. as a. Well, no, he lost because of Jeopardy. Because yeah, yeah, right. he doesn't play football no more. But Bradshaw, oh, you got to love. I love Cherry Bradshaw. Man, he's old school. And when I grew when I was a kid, I was, a, Steel, was, I was a Bradshaw fan. You know, he I, was the man. I like Bradshaw, Mean Joe Green. Come on. Butkus. Butkus was on the Steelers, wasn't he? I don't or on, on the Bears. Yeah, I know. I just had I to throw just, that. In. I didn't mean the Steelers. I Butkus. meant the Bears. Dick Butkus. You don't know Butkus. You don't know Butkus. <laughs> I'm going to give you Butkus. 
Yeah, I like old school. I'm I know you like old anybody school. that knows me knows that. But they don't play football like old school anymore. Everybody's right. sensitive. Boo boo feelings. Yeah, they got boo boo feelings now. They Which, want to get paid lots of money and have boo-boo feelings. Okay, so I agree they need better protection. Can, and I, I am, can I be a football player? I can have boo-boo feelings. Because of CTE, chronic traumatic encephalitis. Encephalosis or something like that? Encephalitis. Encephalitis. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to help you. Are you always helping me out? <laughs> I appreciate it. Because of that. Yeah. I totally agree. They need better equipment. They need better protection. They need helmets that really do the job. And I when agree. the helmet's been hit hard, they need them replaced. That that game, not a later game. When it's been hit hard, there should be some sensor in there that goes off. Kind and like an airbag up. Oh, well, no, it's like <laughs> it's, if you're it's in a motor, total. Gotta if, get you're rid in of a, it. if you're in a motorcycle wreck and you mm -hmm. hit your helmet hard, what do they tell you? Replace it. Replace it. Don't wait. Replace it then. Yep. The same thing should be on football. I agree with that because of brain injuries and brain swelling and personality changes and all the stuff that goes with it. I've really followed CTE through the years and all the players that suffered with it. A lot of my 85 Take beers bears have suffered with this. So, yeah, I love old school football. I know because because you're worried about but it. You're worried about Jim McMahon. I know you. Are. he lives here in the valley. I know. Uh, anyway, it's the anyway. attitude. It's not the roughness of the game. It's her attitude. It's the sissy attitude off the freaking the field. Sissy attitude. Oh my God. Come on. Tell me how you really feel. Tell them how you really feel, Janet. <laughs> this just in. Janet's going to tell you how you really feel. <laughs> Come on. You've Ow. seen some of these players. They're just like. Put the claws away. Put the claws away. Do you remember back in the 90s when Charles Barkley, I know that's not NFL, when Charles Barkley was here with the Suns? Mm -hmm. Okay. Charles Barkley was the man. Man, my car he broke He still is. Are you kidding me? My car broke down and him and some other players got out and helped me push my car. Okay. Wh out of the what? intersection. So that's a man. I I'm pretty sure that almost any of these players that are playing now, if they saw someone's car break down in an intersection, they would probably call the cops and have them arrested for interfering with their day. <sighs> because they're privileged. It's like the one. That, whoa, whoa. It's like the Hold one that up. went on the stage with the attitude. Whatever. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. You know, I like football. Just keep it on the field and keep your mouth shut where it don't belong. So anyways, back That's to what I, really I was saying. <laughs> I feel the Broncos took Patrick Sertan for a bargaining chip, but I think that was probably a worse pick in my eyes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Driver, if you haven't tried any of Mother Trucker Yoga's products, have we got news for you. The news is you are missing out on some great products that really do work. So, you're probably sore from a long day and just don't know where to even start looking, right? Well, driver, stop right there. You don't have to wonder anymore. These products were all designed with the professional truck driver in mind. And the Stiff Mother Trucker Pain Relief Cream is 100% natural. As in, all the junk that you don't need on your body is not in it. It is paraben-free, gluten-free, sulfate free and artificial dye free probably made right here in the usa road tested trucker approved it relieves sore muscles soothes pain and inflammation from bee stings and insect bites it calms that back pain from driving those long hard roads helps alleviate foot pain helps reduce wrist pain elbow pain and stiffness in the neck and shoulders from poor sleep or overuse in other words if your body is feeling bruised and bumped up from that ever-intensive truck driver life, then Stiff Mother Trucker Pain Relief Cream is the answer to what you are asking. Just ask the crew at A&E Shipping Wars. They will let you know. So, go to 18wheeltalk.com slash resources and look for Mother Trucker Yoga to find this and many more great products. I don't know who's the worst pick, but I just want to point out something. So we're looking at the list. I know all the teams. I know all the the 
college teams. I, I've always been that much into football, but we're looking at the list and we're looking at all the little logos. And then I see a yellow W. I'm like, what team is that? I don't recognize that logo in pro football. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, what the heck? Sorry, dad. No, so I had to ask no. Patrick and he's like, that's the Washington football that's, team. That's the WTF. That's Washington team football. That's the what the, <laughs> what the fudge football team. Uh-huh. Formerly known as the Washington Redskins. The Redskins. I'm like, I'm like well, if they've been the Redskins forever. Now they're the the Washington, W, the big yellow W. Washington football team. They're the W. Welcome to the but Washington just, football look, team. If you're watching the video, their fans can go like this in the stands and we'll know what they mean. Exactly. Uh -huh. Gee, what's the W stand for? Wiener. They could paint their hands yellow and go like this. And what? Like, Maybe they were in yellow gloves and that's what they're doing. Oh, there you do. Washington. Okay. Anyway. I just think that's a sissy ass name. Dudes, pick a name. The Indians got mad. So pick another name. The only good name would be the Redskins. How about the Orcas? Doesn't match your color scheme. The Ice Fishermen. Still doesn't match the color scheme. The Wheat Pickers. Wheat's yellow. It matches. It's garnet and gold. Wheat, it looks gold. If you've ever passed a good wheat field before it gets picked. Just saying. I'm saying too. Mm -hmm. The killer orcas. The Washington. Washington killer. How about the Washington rubies? How about the Washington rutabagas? What is Washington known for? The Redskins. The Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, oh, wait, wait, wait. The Washington Golden Delicious Apples. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you here. No, you're not. Now you're grasping at straws. I you're don't... just like you're just pulling shit out of thin air. I don't know, but hold on. We hold, hold, hold. Uh, holding, holding, holding. Do do. What is do, the state do, of Washington do, known do, for? Do, do. It's and it's not Washington State. Oops. It's Washington D.C. Oh, that's even worse. I know. I, I knew I'd do it. It's wrong. the Washington Redskins because yeah. they're in the District of Columbia. I know. I... <laughs> in the United of States. It's going to tell me all the po political. Wow, wow. The White House, they could be the Washington Monuments, the Washington Gallery of Art. Yeah, yeah. All right. Welcome to the Washington Gallery of Art team. Oh, two American presidents kept alligators at the White House. They could be the Washington Alligators. They could have been. No, they opted for just plain old Washington football. Team. Oh, Washington, D.C. citizens are known for liking wine. They could be the Washington White House. Or the Winers. <laughs> no, the White House. Well, if they're in last place, they could be the Winers. Darth Vader adorns the National Cathedral. They could be the Washington Vaders. <laughs> All right, it's time to end this. You're going in the left field. No, I just want to. I think it's time to change that vodka out for water. I don't know what you're talking about, Patrick. The Washington judges. The Washington federal court. No, no, they, they need to go back to the Redskins. The Indians just need to you know, suck it up. You know, we're just paying homage to the area. I Great. We just lost our Indian heritage. Listeners, I'm very sorry, but <sighs> sorry. Hey, listen, if they want to call them the, the Washington really white Irish people, I'm all for it. They're not going to call them. They can't. They can call them the Washington I, really white Irish drinkers. They're, they're going to now forever be known as WTF. Now the what the fuck team. The what the fuck team. It's the Washington team football. What the fuck team? That's that's what it Isn't is. Isn't it the Washington football team or is it the WTF? It's the Washington football team. I'm calling it Washington team football. Oh, I believed you. I, I, <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm calling it's WFT, but I'm calling them WTF. You know, like, what the fuck? Come up with a real name. Just saying. Okay. They probably had a poll out there. Name the football team. And nobody came up with a good name because everybody liked the Redskins. And it can't be Indian name because the Indians got mad. Native Americans. I'm sorry. Native Americans got upset. Now, this being said, I know this is what, what everyone says. 
No, we're not racist or prejudiced or anything. And we do have Native American friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was our disclaimer. That was our disclaimer. <laughs> but it's just like, it's like looking and talking to black people and saying, I got black friends. You just can't say that, Patrick. I know. I'm just saying. I know. But I used to work with a bunch of Indians. Yeah. I, I used to call them Indians. I know. And you called the Mexicans Mexicans. Yeah. And worse. But they also, they, they, they the, dish it out. The things they called you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't repeat these on the air. You yeah, guys not, shut us down. Not repeatable in any language. That being said, you should see the faces he's making. I'm biting my tongue. He is biting his tongue. Anyways, so this has been fun. We did yeah. give our so, nod out to Osa Odegzua. Ah, uh, yeah. However, um. And good I, luck to all the first round picks. And we also gave a shout out to Mr. Stewart, who went from Houston. Grant Stewart. Grant Stewart, who went from Stewart. Stewart. Mr. Irrelevant. But we feel he's not yeah. because he got picked. And he went to Tampa Bay. He went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Go Bucks. Very happy for I you, think, Mr. Stewart. I hope he comes in and just fucking tear, rips ass. everybody's fucking head off. That'd be nice. Make a name for himself. That's right. So thanks for listening. Yes. Thank you very much. Smash that like button. You know, hit Over that, here somewhere. Yeah, hit that like button. Have a party Subscribe to our show. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. We hope we entertained you in some way, shape, or form. If we did, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast player. We love the reviews. Keep them coming in. Hey, I also want to mention our contest is about to end. Our, our contest will end. Is it? Will it be over when this yeah. airs? Yeah. I'm sorry. We had like 50 people enter, so there was really good odds. Yes. So, anyway, I don't know who won yet because I haven't drawn it yet. We are going to be picking a winner on the winners. eighth. Winners will be picked on the eighth of May. And right now, the odds are about 50 50 if you win a cup and a t shirt. You like never know. Twenty winners. We're gonna be. We're gonna do more giveaways. This, I know. This, this is just our first one, and so we've it got, went. It went fairly well. We we've, have. We have T-shirts that we're supporting breast cancer. You know, don't forget these, those. These are the T-shirts we're giving away, and the cups. Yep. And there are fifty-one, I think, entries. Last I knew. I think so. And uh, fifty-one votes. So you got a good chance. Of so winning. who knows? Twenty winners. It could go. I, we'll I don't know which there was five mugs that we had. I don't know which one's in the head. I don't know which one's winning, but I know we had a, quite a few votes. So, yeah, I was real happy. If you voted, keep Thank your fingers you. crossed. You might hear from us. We, we'll be saying, hey, I need an address to mail a cup. Don't a forget, prize, support our breast cancer awareness. Yep. Help us help us help boobies. Yes. We please. want to write a big fat check to breast cancer research. Uh, go to. Uh, one, uh, number eight, wheeltalk.com forward slash BC support. That'll take you to the page on our website that houses the three breast cancer t-shirts. Yes. What we're going to do is we're, we're, we're going to collect all the money till the end of October. After we pay everybody that we have to pay what's left over, we're going to split and give to breast cancer research all the profits hopefully it'll be a big check 50 percent of what's left out of the profits is going to breast cancer research like i said we want to write a big fat check so we need your help everybody knows somebody who has suffered from some form of cancer and, and or or listen we all love titties when you were born you had a titty shoved in your mouth at one time or another Everybody's had a tip. Some haven't mind. taken it out yet. You had to go there. Mm -hmm. This is a clean, wholesome show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, so funny. Help support the boobies. I'm a firm supporter. Yeah, he's a firm supporter. Just saying. So, but help us support breast cancer. Uh, check him out at, at 18wheeltalk.com slash. BC support. 
And if you forget that, just hit the support the show tab on our website there. And the very first thing when you go in there, it'll say that's what I do because my memory sucks. I I do. I go to the home page and I I do the tabby thing. There's a support the show tab. You can buy this T-shirt and amongst other things. I think we got a face covering. Um, We got a shot glass and I think we got a couple other things. Yeah, I want the shot glass. Yeah. That's a that's that's future podcasts because it'll be much nicer to drink my vodka out of a shot glass instead of a twenty ounce. I, I bottle. agree. Yeah, bourbon, scotch, whatever, whatever you want. Oh, it's kind of bourbon, whiskey. I don't want to drink wine out of a shot glass too. I'd have to like have a. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. You're gonna Wouldn't need a tumbler. Work. You're gonna need a tumbler for that one. A straw in the in the bottle. Yeah, that's it. That's all I need is a silly straw. All right, Mister Silly Straw, let's end silly this thing. Straw. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your day, evening, night. Be safe out there. Hope you got a laugh or two. Hope you learned something about football that we didn't know. Yeah, right. I know I learned quite a bit, but anyways. Bye, everybody. Peace out. 18 Wheel Talk. Thank you for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. Be sure to stop by 18wheeltalk.com and check out all the affiliates mentioned in the program today. Remember, we're here coaching generations of drivers while guiding them on their path to success. We'll catch you on the flip side. Spark the revolution. revolution. So tell me, do you have one of those change buckets in your vehicle for fancy cafes? Yeah. And are you looking for a way to help support the show and just don't know how? Well, we have great news for you. It is super easy and you can do it for as little as $3 a month. Yes, that's right. $3 a month. That means for the cost of a cup of coffee, you could support the show for a month. And if you order one of those foo-foo frappy thingamabobs with all those flavors and whipped cream and sprinkles on top, you could support the show for about six months. Isn't that amazing? Saving you calories from that frappy thingamabob with all those flavors and whipped cream and sprinkled things on top and help out the show. (laughs) What's not to like about that? So to do so, just go to 18wheeltalk.com slash support, and you will see just how easy it is to support the show. And don't forget to pick out your fan emoji while you're there. That's 18wheeltalk.com slash support.